Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, everyone, to the philosophy of art and science. Today, our guest is Bethlehem Abata. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Hanok. My pleasure. I um, I have a lot of you know different people on the program, and uh, you know, being a member of the clergy, it becomes clergy heavy too. But sometimes I love to just speak with the men and unfaithful to give that different perspective and a question that I've asked a lot of guests I'd love to ask you is like um how how did your parents kind of like what type of faith did they have and how did they present the faith to you when you were growing up oh um so I feel like I had like the very typical like diaspora kid experience where like you know my folks like they grew up back home in Ethiopia and like religion and spirituality was just like embedded in everything that they did right so when they came to america i think the the thing that they held on to the most was the church and so my mom would take me to church every single sunday i was that kid that did not like going to church simply because it was just early in the morning um so i'm from the dmv and we lived further out compared to most like Kabasha folks in, in DC area. So I had we had to wake up a bit earlier than most to get there on time. So I just I would sleep on the car ride there. I would sleep during a desi. And as soon as it was time to like ship the kids off to like Sunday school, that's when I would wake up. Um that or when it's like time for for um communion. And so, so that's a good point because I didn't really have Sunday school when I grew up in LA. Uh, really? They taught us like the same row of the fidel like every week for like ten years. So I want to hear about that. You you had like an organized Sunday school growing up. I don't know if I'd say organized, but like yeah. so we had a Sunday school teacher. Uh, well, we had a couple of Sunday school teachers, and they would they would teach us mesmer. They would teach us you know Bible stories. Um, looking back on it, it probably was more of like, let's put these kids in a room so that way they're not like bothering the parents. That might've okay. been like the initial like uh, start of it. But we were really fortunate that like our, our teacher like actually cared about us as kids. So he he really put in the effort to, you know, spend time with us and, and teach us as much as he knew, um, which was honestly a really great foundation. Um, it really did shape my my view of the Ethiopian church um and and what I guess what you could do within the church not just as clergy but as like just regular old um uh, okay. uh so I was there until I was like high school and and because I really did not like waking up early in the morning <laughs> How early, by the way, just for our audience, because it kind of varies from place to place. By place the way. to place, right? Yeah. So uh, I would say Odessa would probably start at six. That's so normal. we lived maybe like forty minutes away from church. Mm -hmm. So we'd probably wake up like around like four, like four, four thirty. Um, and it was like my mom, myself, and all of my aunts and uncles, and you know, you're. You're kind of crammed in a in a smaller house, so it, you have to wake up earlier to get ready for all of us to get together and, and go to church together. And so, by the time I think we get to church, would be like five thirty, five forty five, and I am knocked out. Like like nothing is like I remember as like when I got a bit older, I used to always be like, "Why do you want me to go to church? Like I'm yeah. I don't really feel like I'm getting a lot out of it." My mom would just be like listen you could sleep on the floor you could sleep on a chair i don't care but you're going to church like you're going to hear this zema you're going to smell the incense you're going to somehow through osmosis it'll just yes yeah. <laughs> it, it i believe in that and no, honestly the biggest advantage you had right there is from what i could tell already your parents came on time i don't know if the dc culture is just different than la like that or if it's a different you know i think you're a little younger but not that much uh the LA people, I think most of the congregation comes later, yeah. much later than the start. And even our start time for a long time was 7 a.m. It has shifted to 6.30, but it, it was for a long time 7 a.m. And, and a lot of people came later. Like my experience is my parents didn't go to church and it was my aunts who would occasionally 
take me. Mm. And they would come bring me right at Kurban time, which was like at mm. like 9 a.m. or like 15 minutes before. You know yeah. what I mean? So already yeah. you had like a two hour advantage. And is that, was that every week you guys were making that trip? Pretty much every week, yeah. Um, That's impressive. And, I, I would say, I think I think my mom was just a little bit different in that because we lived so far away from the church, she it, it kind of pushed her to get to church on time. I think if we lived closer, it would be, oh, well, we'll get there when we get there. It's okay. Like, you know, it's only like a 10, 15 minute drive. Whereas for us growing up, it was like, oh, it, you, you're making the conscious decision to go to church. So we're going to get there on time. Um, and so... Yeah, but I, I want to say for the vast majority of the congregation, they would they would get there whenever they could. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't like, you know, because I've heard back home, like as soon as Ahadu starts, like the doors are closed. Yeah, <laughs> <thing. Yes. laughs> I, I, I joke about that. It's like, it's kind of like I get it, but it's also kind of contrary to this mission evangelization mindset. Mm -hmm. It's like... I don't know if it's different on the outskirts, but I think that's kind of at least the Addis Ababa culture, as I understand it. And yeah. I think the thinking there is like they have so thoroughly Christianized that area that they don't even have space or the energy to deal with you if you're tardy. So, yeah, they lock gates and then they will some of them tell fairy tales that you're stomping on the angels if you come past that time. Um, However, like the idea in the diaspora is like, hey, we're trying to get people to come in. Like yeah. we need people at least to pay enough dues so that the lights stay on and the heater is there during winter. But there, there's no concern that that the numbers are going to have shortages. That is true. It's actually, it's honestly a like, really good point that I think about it. Because like, because I'm trying to think like, all right, well, what's the differences between there and here? And yeah, here it's like, there's like, there's so many things that you know will pull you away from church like namely work right like people are trying just trying to make by so yeah keeping the doors open like letting people just come whenever they can like just 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 get that five minutes if you need that five minutes right uh makes sense yeah yeah it's it's big so um you were saying till high school did you go to college locally or did, did. you work okay yeah yeah so I, I went to school locally and literally as soon as i got a car and i had just the smallest semblance of freedom <laughs> it, also, it also timed it up with like my sunday school teacher had gotten married and you know he was starting his own life so i was like well let me sleep in because I very much want to enjoy my life and I'll, I'll come back to this whole church thing like when I'm older is more or less what I thought and so but importantly they weren't throwing shade at you your parents when you were doing that my mom threw shade she definitely yeah. threw shade like but it, but it was also at the same point like there was not much she could really do right because like I'm becoming an adult like I think when you're raising kids like you might have the thought like my kids are going to stay here like forever but eventually they do have to leave the nest and they have to make choices on their own and and deal with, you know, for every action there's a consequence, right? So you deal with the consequences of that later on. So um, she was, she I guess, as fine as she could be with, with me, like taking a step back from going to church. And I did, and I enjoyed the much needed sleep that I, I thought I was missing out on growing up. So what uh, was the catalyst or moment that kind of God called you back? I uh, I used to always think like during my years in college, like God was like kind of like, like lightly tapping my shoulder, like don't forget about me type of thing. And I'm a real heavy sleeper. And so I used to like when people would always ask like, well, what what brings you back? What brought you back to church? I'd be like, well, I was sleeping, quote unquote, and God was tapping my shoulder, but I was still sleeping. And so mm -hmm. eventually, God got a, a pot of water and threw it on me to uh, wake uh, me up. <laughs> um, <you say. laughs> and so, like, I think being immersed in the church, like there was. Uh, there was something that became missing once I stopped going and different parts of my personality started to shift. And my mom really noticed that towards the end of my time in college. And she was just like, 
you're you're changing and it's not for the better and i think you should you know start to think about going back to church and and i'm like well no i'm fine i'm just i'm just growing up you you're i think you're just continuing to see me as a, as a i guess like a small child and she was just like no 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 there's something different about you like if you don't want to talk to me about it talk to a priest and i'm like well i'm definitely not talking to a priest. <laughs> That's not happening at all. Um, it, but she just kept kind of like pushing this, but not like, like not too hard, but just like, as any parent, you see a child, you know, like going down a path that like you, you know, what's going to end up happening. So you just like, you know, just, just think about it. And eventually we had a family trip to Ethiopia and I, God really woke me up. Uh, I, I had a, I guess you would say like a near death experience. And I was like, all right, I'm awake now. I got it. I, I've gotten the message. What, what do you need from me, God? And I was like, and so I, I remember doing like a really earnest prayer. And I said to God that, all right, I will go back. I, I, I I'll, we're going to figure this out. I'm going to go back to church and uh, I'll change my life around. And I remember going to church consistently, but six months in, I was like starting to slip back. And I remember praying to God being like, I need help. Like very bluntly, I need help. If you're up there and you want me to go like be, be back in, immersed in this, in this, you know, relationship with you, I need you to help me out. And Sure enough, I ran into a really old friend from Sunday school, mm -hmm. um, a guest that you've had here before, Jack on oh, Nice. And uh, he was like, hey, you should come to my class. Yeah. And I'm just like, you teach? Like, that's weird, but OK. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll come check it out. Because you were students together. That's why you were surprised? Yeah, I, I was very, very surprised. And so. And was this a Sunday like afternoon thing or like Sunday a Friday like evening? Because I know there were Friday evening things at a time, yeah, too. This one was like right after Kadesi on Sundays after Sunday afternoons. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I was like, all right, I'll check it out. And not thinking much of it, because like <laughs> I remember Dawit as like, it's like, like not like a teacher like, uh, like so i was like okay let me i'll just check it out and i and I, I remember i went the following week and i was so like like enthralled with it like just like oh english this like oh i can fully understand this okay like and i remember like walking in towards the end so i didn't even get to like witness like the whole class and so i was like all right i'm gonna make it a point to come on time next week and then one week turned into two and then two turned into three. And then I think he was starting like a new course. And I was like, all right, now I'm fully invested. And then before you know it, we're on this call now. <laughs> that, that's amazing. You mentioned the language piece and you know, language yeah. is an obsession of mine and something we talk about a lot in this channel. What was your level of heart comprehension? And I say that because when I met you, you were already deep in the church and yeah. not just like in the church passively you are actively serving and we serve together in some capacity and we can come back to that later but um i think you surprised me because you said at one moment something like i think you like didn't know the fidel or the alphabet or something at the time i don't know if there's updates so since then you can update me but what was your level of like amharic oh, with your heart parents heart. and in church it was so bad. It did so 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 bad. I I would always make the 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 joke with people because like they'd be surprised, and I like and I would always say, well, my family wanted to learn English, and so the best way to learn English is learn with a five year old. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, free language yeah. instructor, huh? Free language instructor. Literally, quite literally, and so I it. It just it wasn't made to be such a a point to like all right we're gonna like we're gonna teach this kid you know uh, I'm hard like because we're gonna focus like solely focus on like you know her worldly education she's gonna learn English and we're all gonna learn English together and so it wasn't really a big um, like push really to like uh, to to at least maintain um, to to maintain a heart like that but. 
growing up now i'm like oh man i wish you guys did like it would make yeah. like so much easier if like i actually like like learned it as a kid as opposed to like picking things up now you see that that's the question that you're talking about that i'm like most fascinated with and um i think when it comes to learning like genetics and environment play a role people's desires play a role there's so many factors it's hard to pinpoint but yeah. that question is whether it's for faith or or amharic and it's like language the question i ask is like how hard should the parents push and how soft should they push and at like virgin mary's where where i grew up like my parents and for example deacon mirat who's been on my channel a few times his parents is like the opposite and somehow we kind of both turned out the same way which kind of like makes it like such a difficult question like my parents were like super lax and then his were super like hard on him and sometimes when you're super hard on a child whether it's for language or um the church it can backfire like my dad claims to have tried to teach me the alphabet when i was four and he said i really rejected it so like it made him give up and i didn't learn until i was in my early 20s and that was on my own and even when i like i begged my parents as a teenager they like refused to teach me imagine, oh, wow. imagine they're like they're like no learn it yourself like that's literally what they said and then i did but yeah. like other teach you know other parents are like eager like begging their children and then they're not doing it so i i really don't know the answer to this question that's why i like keep asking different people to see if i can get an yeah, n plus yeah, one I plus one plus one sample size until i make sense of the issue yeah. um I, I see also like you're talking about the kind of nasa and english movement that deacon uh, dawit muluna had had started in the dc area that i think uh, in different ways kind of manifested into the Sawaswa Burhan or the Ladder of Light Spot Church, right? St. Paul yeah. Orthodox Tohado Church um, that has been coming around and it's nearly the one year anniversary of. But I'm wondering in those early days then, whether it's you personally or as like that young group that you were joining, did did you guys suffer persecution and i use this word lightly because it's not like the persecution of the martyrs right mm -hmm. nobody's cutting you in half and boiling you in water um but it is a stumbling block i think to your learning of the gospel which got you excited and back to church can you talk about any persecution or shame you guys uh received for not either speaking amharic or using amharic more frequently you know it's I feel like I would not be the best person to answer this just because I feel like they sheltered me in a lot of ways. They sheltered oh, a, a lot of like the, I guess you would say students, right? Mm -hmm. um, from whatever uh, uh, whatever persecution that they were feeling. Um, and it also could just also be like, I'm very much a, I head it down. Like, I just want to like do my thing, learn what I need to learn and not pay attention to whatever noise there is around me. But, you know, I, I I mean, I've heard stories, right? Like of, you know, like, you know, clergy and and people like just like, you know, wondering like why, like, why are you, why are you doing this? Like what what's the point of all of this? Like there's there's no need to do this. Like we need to preserve like uh, our our culture and our our religion as if, you know, this would not, you know, help preserve the culture and 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 the faith in in a more broader way, I feel like. Um but you know like looking back now like i i would say there there were definitely times where people would say they support mm -hmm. but their actions not necessarily match up with the words that they would say um and i think i think that's so that whole saying of talk is cheap sometimes comes into play uh but I, I think for someone like myself, where English is just such a dominant language for me, like it's the it's the language I think of when I when I when it's the language I use when I think, right? So I think for someone like myself, they started to see like, oh, it actually is beneficial for someone like BT, right? Like if BT wants to stay, right, we have to accommodate her in some way, shape, or form, yes. you know. Um, but yeah, I I I know there were I know people I I know like. Like the Gazi Sabai and the the Darkwan Darits of the world, like they they really had to go through it, I'm sure. Um, so 
but specifics, I, I, I don't know. No, that's people. fine. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll get the tea from them on another occasion. Absolutely. Uh, I, heard them, I, heard, I heard them be interviewed in Amharic about it too. Um, no, that's, it's really good. And I don't know if there was something in the water at the time. I'm, I'm wondering if you remember some of the precise dates, just out of curiosity, because I don't know, a lot of people don't know this, but I used to live in DC my senior year of college. I, uh, okay. I used to live, yeah, I used to live on 20th and I, at my school pep oh. I had a building across the street from George Washington University. Yeah. So I was actually going to DC Madam for like four months. And that was when I first started to go back to church. And then when I first actually, I think I may have met you. If I didn't, I met several uh, people there, including Deacon Alama Selassie. And I remember oh. um, Hagare and Gigi. She, she was one yeah. of the first people to reach out to when I was there. Uh, that was in 2015 when I came. Actually, uh, a shout out to my cousin Galila at the time. She was the reason I was in D.C. And uh, she goes to Mariam as well. And then by happenstance, later that day, you guys had an English conference. And that's when I kind of started to make the West Coast, East Coast connections. But what what do you remember like the sort of like when you these years were when you started getting more involved? Because it was later in the teen, 2000 teens that you and I really, I think, yeah. started to know each other more. Oh, well, the funny thing is I'm so bad with dates, but like I remember like those specific conferences so yeah i remember so the first conference yeah i was at dc modem and i went to that but it was more of like i went in to like learn and mm -hmm. then soon as the service was over i dipped out quickly. really yes yeah. very much so. um and i want to say it was the third conference or the third, the, yeah, the third Gulai that they had. And it was at a different church in Virginia. And they decided that they wanted to do like a little interview thing afterwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dawid's older brother, Biniam, he was like, BT, just, just stay for a little bit. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. I can, I can stay for a little bit. And then I remember it was on a Saturday. Uh, and so the next day on Sunday at Bible study, Dari pulled me aside and he was like, listen, you're joining YOTC, whether you like it or not. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to you too. Um, yeah. but, um, and I want to say that was probably like end of 20, either end of 2015 or early 2016 time frame. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I would say like, I, I would say definitely early early 2016 is when I started to get really more involved. That's really cool. So closing in on, on a decade. Yeah, yeah. That, that's really nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny, you, you, you've gotten on a, like another point that I've thought of a lot. And it's um, some people reach out and um, on different media, and they ask about this question of loneliness. And some mm -hmm. people mention this too. And it's like um, in this day and age, people say, oh, it's hard to make friends. And there's so many different like category of friends you could have. I used to play a lot of pickup basketball. You sort of naturally have like basketball friends. And sometimes yeah. with guys, like that's like the only thing you're friends with. And you don't hang out. Sometimes you hang out outside of that. For others, it's uh, going to the gym and working out, whether it's running or lifting weights. And for some people, they just say church. But here's the thing about church is like sometimes you set up these events and then there's a kind of hard ending people like you said just go straight home yeah and sometimes there is these incorporated discussion periods or interview as you said yeah. and um i'm wondering with all the different conferences you've been a, a part of have you ever had to like think about like how do we kind of take it beyond the formal lecture right because there's always kind of like a sermon or a lecture or a homily or something like that but then how do you establish that relationship like for me i remember when i first started coming back to church I was exactly like the same way you were for six months. And I used to bring my little sister at the time. And my little sister and I would go for like six months. We'd go to church. As soon as Kadassi was over, we'd go home. And then at one point, there was some conference that some friend invited me to. And that's when we kind of just had conversation like you and I are having now. Yeah. it It's, I know like we try to really make it a point um, at, at, uh, at St. Paul, like to, all right, after liturgy is over, right? Like 
like let's talk to people right like you know like because it's it there's that whole communal aspect of of church and 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 i know for myself yes i'll go to church because i want that connection with 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 god and i want to i want to communicate with him but if i have struggles right if i'm going through something who do i talk to like there mm -hmm. there's there's there should be that human aspect as well to kind of like kind of be like your accountability partner to make sure you're going to to see how you're doing we're not really meant i feel like to to be alone in this world um and so they it's it's really nice that like whether it's like these like conferences or if it's actually liturgy or after liturgy you know having people feel comfortable enough to like go up to people right and and show them that they're not strangers right like we where we all make up this the the body of christ so we should all get to know each other and and really develop you know some kind of uh bond or or friendship um and I didn't realize that that was important, honestly, until until this conversation, right? Because <laughs> when I think about it, like if I had just kept on like all right, going to these conferences and then leaving soon after, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been able to meet the incredible people that I can say are my friends now, or even you know pick up like the my interest of photography or things of that, if it wasn't like communicating with these people. And so I think there's a lot of, a lot of benefit of just going up to someone or taking the extra like 10 to 15 seconds to go up to someone and say, hi, how, like, how did you like this service? Or hi, like, what'd you think of this sermon? Or, or, you know, like, did you want do you want to get like some refreshments afterwards or or things of that sort like that extra five seconds you'd be surprised at how the wonders it can do for someone absolutely and i hope you actually are using the word refreshment when you ask them as well <laughs> that's amazing absolutely yeah absolutely <laughs> the refreshments are <laughs> um so that's yeah it's a very kind and simple gesture that i think anyone could implement so thank you for sharing that and you mentioned photography you also do videography it's not mm -hmm. false praise i i i have to say this because i've been uh serving in a lot of different places all over the united states and to this day the two highest quality videos that have been shot of my teachings are from you. Shout out to Bethlehem Abata BA is not Bachelor of Arts, but it's your initials, studios. And so I was actually curious because I don't know the answer uh, and you kind of intimated it, but you picked up this love of photography and videography later on or like when you weren't going to church, you, you weren't interested in that. I didn't know if that was your passion like prior to church. Like... It's funny because I I picked it up before coming back to church, but I I would joke that this is the most interesting hobby that God could have given me because naturally I have really bad eyesight. And so <laughs> I did too, but I once was blind, now I can see. 17 hey. years I had I had glasses like you, and then I let a doctor shoot some lasers in my eyes about seven years ago. We're gonna have to talk about that offline yeah. because that's on my bucket list of things to do. Um, I highly recommend it. Oh, there we go. Um, but yeah, like I, I remember like picking up photography because just in a worldly sense, because like I have a big family and I'm a pretty reserved person, and I learned early on if you're recording something, then they won't pull you in to like like the family group to like dance and things of that sort. So I was That's like, oh, funny. I, I will pick this up. Um, but then, oh, absolutely. But um, I remember when I came back to church, I was just really hungry to like consume as much content as humanly possible. And even though YouTube existed, I could not find like anything of good quality, I would say, um, that was like consistently posted. Mm -hmm. And so, I would see people recording things 
and they would never post it. And yeah. I got super frustrated. And so I was just thinking, well, I have a camera. I'm going to bring my own camera and I'm going to record what I want to record. And I will, you know, to can play that game, basically. Um, and I remembered recording some things. I think it was for, for Sunny Madam. And I was going to post it. Well, I was, no, I was going to keep it, but the file size was too big for my computer. And so I was like, I'm just going to post this um and not like i can delete it off my computer and uh you know i'll free up some storage space not thinking that people would want to watch not thinking people would find yeah. it useful like this was really just from like myself um that's and, yeah and i learned that that wasn't the case that people <laughs> that people actually found use for it um and that and more importantly that people found it as service like it, it never crossed my mind that this like photography or video work would be could constitute a service within. And the was it? I, I mean, that's a long service for people who don't know. Depending on the church, that yeah. could be from one a.m., two a.m., three a.m. to about one two p.m. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if you were awake that whole time filming. What what part of the service was it that you were? So filming? it was. So it was. Uh, I guess for the for the Knicks. So the time was coming out, and so I was okay. just like, "All right, all right. I like. I I, I want to. I wanted to record like Muslim. So I was like, mm -hmm. no better time than that to to record. And then. And this is how you know like God really works in mysterious ways. Because again, I've never really was a morning person. And yeah. as I started to do this more and more, um, people within the church, they would be like, well, can you come a little bit earlier? You know? And, That's right. <laughs> and I'm like, well, how early are we talking? And they're like, well, just come at around nine, right? Like, let, let's build you back up more or less. And so, okay, I'd come around nine. Um, and then they're like, all right, can you come like for like actually come for Kandasi this time around? And I'm like, okay, yeah, I can do this. I, that's not a problem. And then they're like, all right, can you come for Tian? I'm like, okay, not sure. <laughs> and then before you know it, like, yeah, they're like, all right, so Viti Mari starts at 12. So 12 midnight, right? Yeah, 12 midnight. midnight. So like, <laughs> just just let people simmer on that for a bit. Yeah. Let that and, marinate. And, and it's midnight fun. till what? Midnight till what? <laughs> midnight to like 1 p.m right because like so i i i come from dc modem they, they they're kind of known uh jokingly as their desk is always a little bit longer services are always a little bit longer and so yeah i'd be there for like 12 hours or so um and now whenever like i tell my mom like oh i have to you know uh, I'm, I'm gonna go to church um, cause you know, it's, it's an annual holiday or whatever. And she's like, oh yes, yeah, so you'll be there at like midnight, right? Maybe 1am if you want to sleep in type of thing. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, look at God, <laughs> you <laughs> finally become a morning person. Amen. You, what, is it safe to say you surpassed even her in how early you're getting there? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. She, you, you will not, you, you know, <laughs> God bless my mom. You will not catch her there before 5am. Like she, she will, she'll get there in time for Kidan. And you know what? I respect that because obviously that's helped her get close to God for decades. And I, I never want it to be like a competition for people. I always remember Chrysostom's uh, homily. Maybe we'll get to that later. Um, but even if you come at the 11th hour, it's not encouraging you to come at the 11th hour. But even if you do, you do. God is going to pay your wages. Um, yeah. I think you said a lot of people weren't posting at the time. I think there is more and more now. There might be oversaturated content now, and now you need a more discernment. But what I have seen before is this sort of analysis paralysis or letting the perfect be the enemy of the good, where people think it's not like edited perfectly. And mm -hmm. so they don't release it for that reason. And then they end up just sitting on it. That's happened to me, by the way. There are a few Tim cuts where um, we've kind of gotten people to record a lot of stuff and then just disappears into the ether. And, you know, it takes all the grace of God not to get upset when something like that happens uh, after you've talked about it so many times. Uh, were, were you just not a perfectionist or were you just so nice at editing and how did you get good at that? If so, like, like what was it that you think got you to just, I mean, it sounds like you were just catering to your own interests. So that, I mean, is helpful. I, I will I'll definitely say like it definitely started off that way um 
because I, I noticed early on, like I liked the reaction that I got from people when I when I either I took a picture or, or I recorded a, a portion. So I thought, well, all right, there's honestly no better place for me to practice this craft than at church, right? Because so a lot of different services happening, and depending on you know how the particular building is like set up, right? You can really learn about lighting and the different like mechanisms within the camera body that you can that you can manipulate. Um, and so I, I started to become a bit of a perfectionist um, and and really utilized each holiday as a way to kind of get better. Um, and then. But there's a downside to that, I will say, mm -hmm. uh, because I I remember I think it was last year uh, for 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 Lidet, I recorded I think maybe three or four different webs and it didn't look right, so I didn't uh -huh. post anything. And and I thought this coming year I was like, well, I didn't record anything. Like I'm very surprised at myself. And I opened the folder. And I'm like, oh, I recorded everything. I just didn't post anything. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Like, like to your to your point, like perfect being the enemy of the good. Like, it's it's wrong of me to hold hold this back just because it didn't meet my own quote unquote standards, right? Like, my standards mean nothing. It it's really God's standards that that should count. And in His mind, and in His in 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 His viewpoint, like is perfect, right? Like the chanting was perfect. The visually, it's perfect. Like, why should I hold this back? And so that is something that like I am I'm working on, right? Like, like there there are things that yes that I can improve and I will use the time to to improve my skills, but the content of itself is perfect. Yeah. See, now I'm fascinated too because and I want to get back to the specific, like to the mechanics of yeah. the equipment and everything too because it gets to the the skills that you built up and the professionalism with which you're taking the service. But I'm coming back to the language piece because my mind is always there. I'm hearing you say, Sane Mariam. By the way, there are a lot of native speakers in Ethiopia who don't know the, the months of the year in Amharic. I'm hearing you say Mazmur, which is okay. Yeah, it's a spiritual song, it's a hymn. A lot of people know that. It's the same in Hebrew, Mizmur. Um, I'm also hearing you say Lidet, which people know in the context of their birthday, but you mean it in, Christ's birthday and Christ's Christmas. Birthday, yeah. So even if you, you maybe maybe you're not doing the full sentences, paragraphs, writing essays, it seems like through this osmosis, you've gotten mm -hmm. a lot of technical terms of the trade of the Giz language and the Amharic language. Did you kind of ever realize that you've been subtly picking up all these things because people use them even when they speak English or what? Slowly but surely, yeah. Like it's crazy what osmosis can do. <laughs> if you're if you're in if you're immersed in something long enough, like you naturally you just pick things up. Um and then you didn't have like flashcards or anything? No. <laughs> Probably would have been helpful, I will say. Yeah. <laughs> flashcards, yeah. <laughs> uh but I think it was more because like after a certain point, like okay, I'll record something and it just didn't make sense to just like name this like modern v1 or v2 yeah. or, <laughs> right and so it's like what well, would you be on by now oh probably v 3472 or something like, some random number i don't know um but it just it the more the more i recorded the more i became fascinated about well what's actually happening all right what's happening when is this happening what's the name of this right what's like what are what are, what are the words right what do they mean um because if you're going to spend 12 plus hours doing something you should be you, you should have an idea of what or at least what you're doing and what what the meaning is behind it and the more that i would learn honestly the more i would fall in love it's it, the, the the different services that are within our church, it's so poetic and so fascinating and so beautiful. It, you just, at least for myself, I become more enthralled with it. And so it's like, all right, well, let me pick up as much as I can and whatever I don't know. You know, God has really blessed me that there are people around me that I can, you know, pick their brains about, right? And, and learn more, so. 
and they didn't get annoyed you weren't they didn't feel pestered with all the questions you were asking them no i think they probably thought why don't you ask more questions like oh I, that's wonderful yeah i I think especially like um, one of my one of my good friends, like I think he just found it very fascinating that I became fascinated with this. And it was like, yeah, like let's let's learn as much as humanly possible. You know, like it's, it's if nothing else, right? We're as it's weird for me to say the youth because I don't feel young anymore, but <laughs> but like this is supposed to be passed down to us, right? So like yeah. Uh, eventually, this is going to be ours. I should, and, and so I always kind of feel like I should know more. Yeah, you know? that's good. I'm glad you felt that responsibility. Now let's get back to like the equipment. You weren't shooting this on an iPhone, right? Or did you start on an iPhone? Like, uh, what was what was like that first impetus, and what was that first iteration? Like, what what equipment did you use whenever it was the first V1? V1 was a Nikon D3200 camera. That was my first, like, my first DSLR camera. Um, mm -hmm. it, 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 and can you explain what a DSLR camera is in case? I'm sure oh, many people know, but just in case. Um, it's, it, it, well, it, it was a prosumer camera. So it's a, a, in a sense, like, it's a professional camera. Um, it's not like a, like a point and click type of camera like there's there's a, a body to the camera and there's a lens uh, to it and you connect the two together and you can zoom in and out and you can manipulate like the the lighting um the so you can manipulate the exposure of the of the image uh you can um depending on how sharp the camera pictures it, it can be um you, you you can really play around with it i guess is the most simplest way to say it um and it served me well, you know. Uh, but you don't have to well. develop it in yourself. It's a digital no, it was, camera. It's a digital camera, I yeah. would say. Because I, I used to do advanced photography, actually, in high school. And we, we have to process our film. So oh, if you yeah, feel old, I, I feel old, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I always say it takes a, a very special talent to, to, to do film photography these days. Uh, you have to really know your stuff. And yeah. this was a digital camera. Um, and it, you know, it really, it's, it, it, it served me th through some good times. Um, yeah. how, was, how, like five years, four years, like, what was the life on that thing? Uh, so I, I think I purchased it like in 2013. And I think I had it until 20, I think 2017, I want to say. Yeah. And then I I bumped up to a a Nikon D seventy five hundred. So same same brand. Mm -hmm. um, the specs on the, on that camera was just a little bit different. Um, better. So, a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Based on the price point, it was definitely a little bit better. I, I, I was gonna I was gonna ask that. We we don't have to ask about your whole budget, but <laughs> could you could you because this is real, right? You want to yeah. you want to bring the quality. There's a price tag associated with that. Could you talk a little frankly about that? And like, because that's yeah. a decision, right? You're going to be in the hole a little bit. Yes. Yeah. No. When people ask me like, like, oh, like, what do you think about photography? I'm always like, well, it's a great hobby, but it's a very expensive hobby. Um, and you quickly pick up on it because, so there's two pieces, right? There's the, the body of the camera. So like, uh, actually have some cameras here. Uh, oh, you have multiple, not just the one. Uh, yeah, and that's also the thing with this hobby. It becomes a very addictive hobby as well. Um, so there is, so this is, I would say, as a camera body, right? So um, it has a grip. It has a, a screen that you can um, kind of look and see uh, what, what's being, what image is being taken. Um, so I would always say, like, this is like the brain. And this is the eye, so this is the lens, right? So I always kind of think the body is nice, but it's not the most important thing. It's not what makes an image an image. The most expensive piece and what really makes an image an image, I think, is the lens. So you can always have one body, but you end up having multiple different types of lenses, um, depending on the size and what type of image you're trying to, to capture. And so, yeah, it becomes very expensive because you once you pick up one, 
you learn you can't just have one. You have to have mm -hmm. a different type of lens. Like you need one lens for that's that's pretty wide that can take a a, a pretty wide image. Um, then you need one that you know that can take a, a much more tighter shot, so you don't have to be super close uh, to to the subject. Um, and then you might realize, well, okay, I want I want a lens that you know will be great for taking portraits, right? Taking pictures of people, or you want a, a lens that, you know, would be great for like a particular action, whether it's like sports or something that's moving a lot. And so you end up spending quite a bit amount of money um, depending yeah. on what you are trying to do. Um, and in my case, I, uh, I really started to get uh, interested in both worlds, both photography and videography and I learned if you want a camera that can kind of do both, you you kind of have to spend some money um, yeah. to, to, to go down that road. But it was well worth it. Um, How much <laughs> money? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I would say uh, so. The 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 Nikon cameras that I had, like those, were really budget friendly. Uh, mm -hmm. cameras um and i tried to like really stay with a particular brand right uh yeah. because you'll you'll notice that each brand has their own um unique aspect and you have to get a lens that uh kind of fits that uh, that camera or that brand yeah when so i was into film I, I was in nikon too but i remember canon being a great competitor yes was and that's actually the camera that I moved on to next. Mm -hmm. I my my old Nikon camera, like it it broke down. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take this as an opportunity. I had a, a mentor that was into photography and he was using Canon, and so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get a camera just like him. And that that set me back by about I think all in all about twenty five hundred dollars uh but the great thing um or something that great that really came out of picking this up and and using it in the church was people started to notice you yes right? i was gonna I, that's <laughs> and, a great segue yeah and and so and i and i found out well if people notice you and they see you with a with a pretty expensive looking camera they kind of assume that you're a photographer or mm -hmm. you do video work and they have kids and apparently their kids want to graduate high school and college and have graduation parties and different events and and they're like well since we know you in the church and you're pretty reliable can you work this event and turns out they'll pay you know and so uh it ended up being uh i was able to kind of turn this hobby into a into a side business of sorts and it kind of helped offset any costs that that might incur um, from this very expensive love of mine. So, yeah. So that's a great way to recuperate. I was going to ask you that too. So I didn't. I didn't know the extent of it because I. I know you mostly for the church stuff, but on your um, your website, uh, BetelhemabathaStudios dot com, you have church along with love portraits and world and very by the way beautiful aesthetics and and kind of clean uh, UI UX design that you have there and it. Um, it made me wonder and think did you were you like in school did you have another like day job and this was just a side hustle or did you ever like were you able to make this the main thing or is that like the future goal god willing that is the goal god willing um but yeah. i do have a nine to five that really does pay for all my bills and pays for me to it's um it's uh and it's actually very they're very flexible in that like i'm able to like travel and 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 kind of really turn this photography thing into a side business um yeah but yeah it's um it I, i'm very much a big believer in like just capturing life's moments and um god willing this could turn into like a full-time thing i i know people who have made this into like their full-time business mm -hmm. uh, and and that requires a lot of dedication, a lot of time um, to really perfecting your craft and then really treating it as a business, right? Um, yeah. And 
I, I've always, I like the stability of a consistent paycheck. So it's probably the main reason why I haven't moved it over to, yeah. to doing this time, but. It's very high risk, like you said. I've I've met the several Ethiopians who do this, and they find this lane. And you know, I was part of a wedding party. I was a groomsman recently in Seattle. I was one last year too. And some of those photographers and videographers, they travel to Oakland, to LA, to DC, to Calgary and Edmonton and Canada. They go all over. They're like the they're like the singers, you know, like the Asmatis too. Like their willingness to kind of increase the scope it kind of makes it difficult to have a local nine to five as, as well. There's gotta yeah. be some kind of transition in between point. There was even a funny moment. I think he's kind of like semi-retired, but there was this guy, everyone knew, I don't know if you ever came across him, Lancer Chung. And I believe he was a Korean gentleman and somehow like one Habesha person hired him. And then everybody was hiring him for funerals, weddings, baptisms. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, this guy, uh like is deep in the culture and he he did a bunch for several years i haven't seen him in a while so i don't know if he like made it or something and he's retired but it thinking about him brings up an interesting question about when you transitioned from those smaller bible studies in english to the larger uh very large congregation of dc maria uh and and other churches that you were at like congregation in general is going to be bigger than a bible study he is not Ethiopian Orthodox. He never converted. So his approach to like the Bible study is usually in some hall or something, and it's considered a slightly less sacred space, although you may see people still kind of dressed formally. Inside the main sanctuary, we have this theology of sacred space. You take your shoes off, you're in your net Allah. If you're a woman, your head is covered. And there are so many, um, there are areas that are taboo let alone for women, for men who are not ordained to approach and to enter. So as you're beginning to do the photography and videography within the, the Eucharistic liturgy, yeah. how did you approach like those taboo points and like trying to get, you know, a better angle? Because sometimes I tell you, he this guy would be damn near in the oh. inner sanctuary, like standing like this, not yeah. in a tala, wearing all black and like a t-shirt, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's... It, it... I always take it as a as a challenge, right? Um, and uh, I remember a few years ago, uh, there was I was talking to one of my friends about this because she very much was like, "Obiti, you you're very respectful. Like you know the the I guess the boundaries that you have as as a woman of where you know where is what is acceptable and what what like what will be pushing the bounds." but is that fair or something? And I'm like, it's whether or not it's fair or not, like, I, like, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to make waves or anything of the sort, but I, I'm very much a big believer, whether it's within like our, like within our church or any other like sacred space, like I, I want to respect the, the rules uh, that, that are given. Right. And I, especially within our church i i very much think of it as a all right let's see what i can what i can create what what kind of image i can create what kind of scene i can shoot within this uh within this i guess within the space that i'm given like i, I guess i'm i more or less think of it as a glass half full type of thing of let me let me look at this as a challenge and let's see what i can create and if it looks good great if it doesn't then it's it's not really me right yeah. um i never really think of it as like well why can't i like why can't i stand in like the animated like with all the like all the deacons like why do i have to give my camera to one of the deacons if i want to get a particular shot of like you know of something like why do i like i, I never really think of it as, like that mm -hmm. um it it, it might just be because I'm. I don't like to make waves. I, I. I don't even like to really be seen. Um. Like my goal every Sunday that I record is I. I don't want people to notice me. I would very much like to be invisible, so that way people can just focus on their on on their prayers on on what on what they're trying to do. If the moment that like I become part of their distraction, then it's like uh, why, why am i doing this like no that's making sense that's right you don't you don't want to disrupt it it's very funny 
yeah. our Archbishop of Southern California and Alaska, his Beatitude, Abuna Barramas, he's very quick-witted. And one time, this woman, um, she was getting a little upset at him and raising this type of a question. And it was during the Fulsata fast, so maybe the fasting was getting to her, I don't know. <laughs> but she was asking in a Q&A one time, and she was like, how come I can't go pour holy water for myself? And he was so fast in his answer. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. And he said, what you don't understand is you're a queen and you have to be served. And so yeah. actually, like this person is like serving you. And so I was visualizing the scenario. I hadn't actually seen you do it when you were saying like, you're asking a deacon to go get a certain angle for you because he could approach the sanctuary, the inner sanctuary in a way that you can't. In a way, you're like the director of photography and videography, and he's yeah. almost acting like your servant in that or your employee in that small moment, you know, not in every moment, obviously not in relation to the Eucharist and things like that. Then you switch, you know, when if you're if and when you're receiving communion, he'll be the one with the holy spoon. So, you know, but in that particular moment, you're kind of like the director. So if anything, like <laughs> it makes you look cool, it's how you interpret it. So I like I like that that positive take you you have on honestly it. i love Barnes's like way of thinking about it like that yeah yes i am a queen like yes <laughs> like that is such a great comeback <laughs> yeah he he always has a bunch of those um <laughs> uh so actually this one is related so i will mention it there was um there was a time it's funny you know different people have different uh takes on different teachings in the church some things are kind of clear some are more borderline for people and there was a time where there was a guy back home in ethiopia who didn't agree with his teachings but found that he could copy his material and make money by selling physical copies of it on tapes in ethiopia and uh copyright is very difficult i don't know if you know across countries that's like my field of uh, dispute resolution like you have to go to a mediator or an arbitrator and you have to hope that those laws are respected and agreed yeah. to terms. It's very hard to sue people across countries, but there are kind of ways to do it. And he had contacts. And so some people approached him and they're like, do you want us to file for copyright infringement in Ethiopia? We know lawyers, we have people. And he turned around and he's like, uh, no, you know, what are you talking about? Like, this guy is spreading my teaching for me for free and I don't even have to pay him. And he's like, I should be paying him to spread my teaching. And so he did not pursue that at all. That was his kind of, again, quick wit and nonchalance and approach to that yeah. uh, matter that would have made a lot of other people mad, especially if it's their main and Jedi rather than having a, a nine to five. I'm curious if you have in uh, engaged in people getting your content without attribution or even further like commercializing it and and like how you've dealt with that yeah it's actually happened once um for the most part like i'll i'll see it on youtube that you know like there's some folks that will take some postings and and post it as their own and i think for the most part like i don't really pay much mind to it um because I think later on, I, I started to put like my name on some of the videos. Mm -hmm. So it's like, they take it. Everyone's it's, 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 I guess, mine in a sense. Um, but I remember there was one, one person in particular, like he, he took one of my videos and uh, uh, he posted that as his own. And I think he just caught me on a bad day. And so yeah. I was like, you know what? No, co copyright infringement yes <laughs> on youtube yeah on youtube yeah um <laughs> and uh rightfully so he kind of made a big stink about it um because he's like this is a church service like is it your church service like what do you like like why are you why are you doing this mm -hmm. um and it it made me think uh you know yes i might be recording something but at the end of the day, it's not really mine, right? Like this, it's not my service. Um, it, it, and so I should be able to uh, let anyone, you know, use whatever video that I, I may have recorded um, for 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 whatever purpose that they're looking to do. Um, Cause at the end of the day, it's, it's really promoting and, and that particular case is really promoting like the services that were being done at DC Modem. So, um, it, it was kind of humbling for me to kind of like think about like 
well, what is really mine and what's really the church's? And if if someone is using it for for a good purpose, right? Then share galore. It's fine. It's you know um, a little like uh, I guess what's the word? Um, recognition might be good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Attribution uh, recognition. Yeah, um, or just like a you know like something we either, either either within like the post or the caption or something along those lines, um, just to kind of like acknowledge uh, like the like who who did what might be good. But uh, I think now I'm, I'm definitely of the mindset of I'm just I'm just showcasing this existing service to the greater world. So. If someone wants to take that and, and post it on their platforms, then great. Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. You really see the beauty and you're trying to share it. You want people to taste and see the goodness of the Lord. And one of my favorite lines from the Psalms is actually the earth and the fullness thereof are his. And so mm -hmm. it's a great mentality you have as, as a guest on this earth, on this planet, and God mm -hmm. is really the one owning it. And I think that's really related to the church stuff. Um, but you you do do other stuff, right? Like, especially you have your tabs on your website, um, again, which is your first and last name, studios.com, the portraits and the world. That that That's kind of different, right? Could you talk about uh, what you do in your categories of photography and videography of portraits and the world? Yeah, so I, I very much, I think I saw a quote that said like photography is just, um, capturing uh, a moment for a lifetime. Um, and so I, we, we, we walk this time on, on this earth and we experience a whole host of different emotions. And I, I really much love how descriptive the human face can be, um, no matter how, like what, what occasion it is, whether it's a, a happy occasion or a sad occasion or, or, or anything. And so um, I love to capture people. Um, I love to capture their experiences um, and so that they can take take that image and, you know, 20, 30, 50 or 60 years from now, they can look at that image and really look at the memory behind it and think back to what they what they were thinking at the time. Um, and at the same time with like travel photography, I started to dabble in that because the more I traveled, the more I, I saw just how beautiful the world is. Um, mm -hmm. in particular traveling to, traveling to Ethiopia uh, a few years ago, I, I really, I really, getting outside of Addis Ababa at least, um, and to see like, how green it is, how peaceful life is, and just how simple life can be. It, there's a real beauty to it. And it, it just kind of made sense to just kind of capture it and and at least just post it for the world to see. Like this, this is this is how peaceful the world can be if we just simply live. I mean, that it's so beautiful. And when you're speaking of it, the world's peacefulness, it it brings me back to church. Um, my father, for a long time, very famous, uh, white Abba, Abba Thomas Finley, he yeah. uh, always talks about how he was drawn to the church because specifically he was Russian Orthodox for like 30 years. So he didn't have to come to us. And now he's been with us for like 20 years. And the reason he came to us, he says, that was kind of unique, is we're able to dial it all the way down like during Ahadu, when we say one is the Father, one is the Son, one is the Holy Spirit, in the beginning of the liturgy, he's like, people are absolutely still. Yeah. Right? You could almost not even hear them breathe. Yeah. And and there are no instruments but the bell in the Eucharistic liturgy. But in those moments that you're talking about, like the Tabot or the Ark of the Covenant procession, sometimes people get trumpets. In Ethiopia, in the Gatar, I've seen accordions. Like... People get random, yeah, accordions. I, I've seen people have perfume. People bring out mats. Yeah. Um, some of my friends, the deacons of past days, they were talking about the difference between like inside the inner sanctuary, Mahalid spiritual songs, which are of the school of Saint Yared, and then 
the kind of random songs which are borderline and are Manfasawi Zefen or like real, almost like worldly songs that yeah. especially the older mothers would sing as they follow the procession of the Ark of the Covenant. And it gets just rapid fire, like loud and boisterous and crazy. Um, so you have like the, the range, like the stillness and then like almost chaos, but like you know, beautiful chaos of of joy, of this expression of joy, um, solemnity, and then this expression uh, of joy. But like for you as a photographer, and maybe it's easier as a videographer, but when you're taking the photos, I imagine you're like, are you having to like actively adjust the shutter speed when you're going from like the stillness <laughs> to the, the motion? Yeah, could you talk Very about much. that? Yeah, like, but there'll be times where like I, in the in the midst of I guess I would say like the beautiful chaos like I'll look at I'll I'll quickly look at my camera I'm like ah oh, the blurriness is crazy Got but then ghosts. like <laughs> but then it's like the next day I'll 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 open up the image like once I've had like a day to like to like process everything and I'll look and I'm like it's actually very beautiful like the ca like the I guess you would say the chaos of it all like the movements mm -hmm. of it all like uh, there's there's something very natural and and beautiful about like for instance um if uh someone hitting the 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 cover or like like it, just because like they're so like um mesmerized by like the the words or the chants like they like they're like they they have this look of like they're in another place and like they're looking up and they're just like like just transported, I feel like in heaven or something, and it's like capturing that movement. Yes, it might, in my eye, it might not be perfect, mm -hmm. but there is a beauty to it. Um, but yeah, like in the day, like in the midst of like trying to capture these images, or even like honestly with the video, like there are times where I'm like I'm trying to like perfect like the the settings, and and then I know in the midst of it, I'm missing like a moment, and so it's uh, I feel like it's like a delicate balance of like trying to be present to to capture the moment but then at the same time trying to you know get the right settings in place so that i can capture it as best as i can yeah i i like that and i like that you appreciate you know you remind me of um there are a lot of these famous kind of japanese isms that are shared online and um one of them is they say they have this idea like if a pot breaks they'll kind of um, replace it with gold or some other color and and it kind of it shows the flaw of it because they want to see it with its flaws you know warts and all and so yeah. there's a way in which another photographer would look at that scenario you're talking about as like something to throw out and never release but you're finding even the beauty in, in beauty. those yeah, yeah that's that's really cool i wanted to get back to um your your youtube channel some of the more uh popular things you have and you said you kind of categorize it in your head with these ways too so i see for example it's great to me i was ordained on this holiday so it's great not that particular year but your highest rated video is a hadar uh, yeah. celebration yeah. uh do you have any memories of that that one is by far by the way it looks like it's by far your your highest uh most popular video which is crazy to me because i'm just like I feel like there's better videos, but <laughs> um, but I, I, you know, I, I, it's kind of like I don't know. It, it, it it's fascinating to me that that video is, uh, I guess, popular. Um, but I think that holiday, I remember that particular year, it was the church was incredibly packed, like incredibly packed, and. Um, I think that was, I think that was the year I had just came back from Ethiopia uh, after my great grandmother had passed. And for some reason, I just thought, all right, I need to get back to DC for Hidari mm -hmm. Like, as if like, I couldn't celebrate this holiday in, in Ethiopia. Like, <laughs> like, it, like, and, and actually I think it was probably because like, if, if I was back home, like, I would literally be in a sea of people. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, when you're at your local church, right? It's 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 your home, right? So like you you have a little bit more, or at least I feel like I have a little bit more freedom. Um, I kind of push my way to the front. Um, 
That's and, true even of the deacons, I'll tell you. I, I've yeah. known several deacons who go back home and they don't even necessarily like serve in the sanctuary because you might go to some place and they'll they'll literally like like their immigration, they'll say, Where are your deacon papers? And it's funny to me because I, I never personally got deacon papers. We just didn't do it as formally, but I've met people who have like a deacon ID. And so let alone Not you, like some, some clergy don't, you know. That 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 makes all the sense in the world because how would they know that you're like a deacon or a priest yeah. like you show them identification like like I, but yeah i could just i just remember that that particular that particular year and for that particular holiday i just i wanted to make it a point to to get back to the states so i can actually celebrate the holiday um and it was just a really beautiful holiday beautiful day a bit chaotic um because just it feels like whenever it's a uh, a celebration for the Virgin Mary, like just people just come out in droves, um, yes. and so the church was like particularly packed, like more packed than usual. Um, and it, I, I guess maybe like all the stars aligned. I don't know, but mm -hmm. um, but I just remember it being a very a very beautiful, very beautiful day. And I'm happy to see also in your like top six, you have two videos from one of the times we got to know each other more, which was back in December of 2019, the, the Texas um, conference in English. And the difference is the Hidara Sion is like a mostly Giz Amharic celebration. Yeah. We had Giz and Amharic at the conference too. It wasn't like everything was English, but the yeah. predominant focus was, was youngish people, right? 20s and 30s included, maybe even 40s. And it was mostly English, but we sang in, in all three languages. And yeah. we had Eritreans and Ethiopians there as well. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, that was that was a great weekend. I will say. Um, I I think I've been to Texas a good amount of times over the past few years, um, but that was like one of the few times I've been to Houston. And mm -hmm. uh, other it, times was Dallas or other, yeah, most of the times it's it's in Dallas. Um, mm -hmm. That if I'm going to Texas, I'll, I'll usually be in in Dallas, but. Houston was that that conference was it was really great um to 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 witness how like it, the people from all across that state will just make it a point to go to a particular city to have a uh to hear the word of god um and and to and to fellowship with their with their you know with their brothers and sisters and the host, southern hospitality is a real thing i've learned um it, and just, just to see the young people like sing at the top of their lungs um it it, it was very it's very beautiful like it's uh to to see that they they will take the time and the effort to 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 learn as much as they can about the church and take ownership in the church and really make it like their make make themselves feel like this is theirs um so it was it was a good time and yeah, i love and, service, by the way and you oh thank you <laughs> glory <laughs> to god um i think uh you're usually the lady behind the scenes right the bts in in, in the lingo of the entertainment field my sister's in the entertainment field too she teaches me things like this um However, today, obviously, you're in front of the camera, and I think then you were yeah. too. If I'm if I'm remembering correctly, we were on a panel together. We were on a panel we, together. Yeah. With and maybe Mazamur Lydia as well. Yeah, yeah. I I remember when when they told me that they need like a second woman, like they wanted to put as many women as they could, like in in this like Q and A table. I was just like. This cannot be happening. This cannot <laughs> be happening. Like, I got you. I have to be recording. Like, what? And they're yeah. like, no, 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 no. Don't worry. We 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 got someone that will record. Don't worry. We'll they'll take good care of your cameras. You're sitting at this table. And I'm just like, all right. That, that's what I'm told. Yeah, but funny enough, um, every time that I have been in front of the camera, it's always been uh, either at a place or for a group of people that are not associated with DC, and so. I'll end up coming back home and they'll see it and they're like, so you can be in front of the camera for all these other groups, but for, <laughs> for your for own us. group, you're not. I'm like, no, I don't know. 
Because <laughs> you feel more comfortable saying no to your own people's. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But I what I remember about that QA, like I remember there were some really like hard hitting questions. Um questions that like I very much wanted to be like, Essie Snami, like this is really for you. Like uh, this yeah. is above my pay grade type of thing. Um but I think those types of things um uh, they're much needed and yeah, to have as many women as possible to to sit and be able to to answer those questions. And it just says for like, just to show like, you know, a anyone can, uh, anyone can preach the, the gospel um, through your actions, um, through your lived experiences. And um, it, it just kind of helped to get me out of my comfort shell a bit. That was great. And that was the first time I think I heard you. Obviously, I heard you say it again today, but the first time I heard you say the way you kind of gradually started coming earlier and earlier. And that yeah. itself was about four and a half, almost five years ago. And so within that time, you started to come even earlier. And it's great to yeah. hear that that progress. Uh, maybe you'll start coming at 8 p.m. the night before. And now we'll see next time we, we talk. But um, <laughs> I, I want to thank you so much for your time. As we close out, I want to hear any kind of advice you have for any young women then or or old women or or men or whoever is listening to you but you know whoever relates to you the most yeah. uh to how can they find their their lane in the church if they're not in the clergy and then after you're done saying that go ahead and, and plug your youtube channel and your website so as well yeah sure um yeah I, the biggest thing i would say is Every single one of us has a unique talent um, given to us by God. And, and, and what I've always felt is whatever talent you have that you're using in a, in a worldly sense, you can find a way to apply that to the church. Um, the, the, the church is many, many things, and it needs, it needs a lot of things, right? Um, yes, it needs clergy. Yes, it needs Sunday school teachers. Yes, it needs choir singers. Yes, it needs people um, within the kitchen to help prepare the food and whatnot. And, and there are great, great blessings that come from all of that. The church also needs people who are great with numbers. The church needs people who are great with different aspects of technology. The church needs people that are creative and you know knows how to use Photoshop and, and graphic design and people who know how to um, who are organized, who knows how to use a spreadsheet, right? Like whatever talent you you particularly have, I promise you, you can apply that to the church and the church will be forever grateful um, for that. And that's something I think the the clergy have really instilled in that to me. Um, and so whatever you like to do, more than likely you can apply that to the church, especially as a, as a, as a woman. Um, and so, uh, that that really is the biggest thing and even if like you look around and you don't see that many women around it yeah it's awkward at first right to kind of be like to look around and see that there's no one that kind of looks like you doing what you want to do within the church um but you just kind of have to remember that you're not doing this to please the people around you right this is really between you and god so like kind of ignore the the white noise around you and just focus on your on your service uh and and god will repay you in kind um in terms of how people can find me uh all right yeah so i do have a website it's uh it's my full name that's so bethlehem studios.com um i do need to maintain that website a little bit better um and likewise my youtube channel is bethlehem Abata studios um and I think I'm more active on YouTube and on Instagram than anything else. Uh, so my Instagram handle is underscore BA Studios underscore. And I just found you on TikTok recently. Yeah, I'm trying. You know, it's just it's not my cup of tea. But you know, mm -hmm. if 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 the kids are out there, then I guess I could be out there. So yeah, you got to meet them where you are. And I'm so glad that you opened it up beyond your expertise as well. You reminded me when you said that of my late uncle, uh, Fadlak, he passed away a few years ago. Nobody knew this until after he fell asleep with the Lord, but he had been secretly uh, doing the church's taxes, uh, or not taxes, but accounting, because, mm. you know, churches don't really pay taxes, but they have accounting. 
uh, he was doing that those services for them for free for like decades and nobody ever knew about it. And so yeah. you reminded me of that when you opened it up beyond your narrow field of expertise. So I appreciate that. Thank you for being on the program. Not a problem. Thank you for having me, Hannah.